Welcome back, everybody. Um, different type of video today. Another NBA related video. I also know it's going to be kind of late to be doing this. Um, but I'm doing it anyway. And I'm reacting to ESPN's, as we all know, the top 75 players, 75th year of the NBA, 75th anniversary of the of the association. Um, they released the 75 greatest players of all time. Now, only 25 more players got added because when the 50th edition of the NBA, the 50th year of the NBA happened, they did a 50-year celebration. They did an all-50 team. This is the NBA all-75 team when we know who's on the list. Um, but today, I'm going to be reacting to ESPN's top 75 players of all time in order. I've seen a couple TikToks about this. I kind of have an idea of who's here. I don't know how far I'm going to go down on this list. Um, but we're just going to go. We're just going to do what we do. And I will probably be looking over here a lot because that's where my computer is. I don't really have like a table or like something. I've got this thing behind me, but uh, I don't really have a good place to like set something to where I can like look at it, not in view, like where it won't like whatever uh, editing, like setup problems. Um, this is my mouse. Say hi to the mouse. Um, I'm just going to put it here so that I can scroll um, and look at my computer. Number one is Michael Jordan. That's not surprising. I have no issues with Mike at one. Uh, I'm personally a LeBron guy. Um, Mike has done everything that you could want from somebody who was like kind of supposed to be like the face of the NBA. He didn't revolutionize basketball in every way, but I'd like to say he culture, culture, culturalized, culturalized it, culturalized it. Um, everything was about Mike. I mean, the Jordans, the brand, the Gatorade commercials, everything. Um, he's just probably... I don't know about probably, but he's definitely a top three NBA icon of all time. I'd put Curry up there. I'd put LeBron up there and I'd put Mike up there. Um, that's just how it is. Uh, he's, he's one of the goats. Uh, I'd say he's arguable goat. Um, two is LeBron. I have no problem uh, with him at one and MJ at two. Braun is just that dude. I mean, you know, what was it? 10 straight years. In the finals, damn, 10 straight years making a finals appearance. Um, had his lulls, but I don't think you can take away. I don't think him, like he should never, he should not be lower than three on anybody's list. Uh, if I hear, if I hear the first three names on your list, like I'm talking to you and I hear the first three names on your list and LeBron James isn't one of them, I'm not listening to you anymore. Um, three is Kareem. I have no problem with Kareem. I think he has the most uh, MVPs in NBA history. Um, one of the up there in all-time leading scoring. Uh, LeBron just passed him uh, for total points in playoffs and regular season. Total points scored and all that. Um, so Kareem at three, I have no issue with. Um, one of the great players, a truly great center. Uh, didn't necessarily revolutionize the center position, but like kind of added a little bit of finesse to it and kind of added a, he wasn't like a, I mean, he was beating people up back in the day. Like he was literally swinging on folks, but he added like a finesse to the game that I think it was needed in a time where it was a lot of brooding, driving to the rim, getting fouled, hard foul type stuff. He kind of, you know, added a little mid range game that was much needed in the NBA. Magic Johnson at four is kind of crazy. This is the first crazy uh, thing I've seen on the list so far, and we're at number four. <laughs> um, I don't even think Magic is the best point guard of all time. So, I, I mean, he has the rings, he has the MVPs, he's got everything that you could ask for um, from a player. But there's just something about Magic that just doesn't necessarily do it for me. Um, I don't really know what it is. I don't think he's the fo the fourth best player in NBA history is kind of crazy. 
and I, I'm a 23 year old, so I didn't watch Magic like at all. Um, but I know I I understand his greatness. Career averages were 19 and a half and 11, two steals and seven rebounds a game. That's a great stat line. He was one of a kind too, where he was like a big guard who could handle, who could run in transition, who could play multiple positions. I just don't know if he's the fourth best player of all time. I've seen the number five player. Number five player is Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> he averaged uh, 30 points, 20, 23 rebounds, and four and a half assists for a career. That's like the best career stat line somebody could ask for. But um, Will DeFour is crazy. Because I think I, I I think LeBron James should not be the only. I don't cut Mike is modern. I don't think those should be the only two guys that are like the. Uh, I guess you count Magic as modern too. I guess, but he seems older to me. I don't think Will's a top five player of all time. I I, I truly do not. Um, he was getting robbed of MVPs by Bill Russell, who's probably on this list somewhere. Uh, I mean he has to be. He has to be on this list somewhere. But Will, Will to me, I, I, I'm like a funny Wilt stan where I'm like, I talk to uh, my roommates about this stuff where I'm like the, it's not necessarily the idea of Wilt, but it's like, there's so many crazy stories about Wilt Chamberlain that I'm just like, I want to believe they're all true, but I know that half of them aren't true. Like the fact that he hooked up with like, what was it like 20,000 women or something like that? Something crazy. And I remember, actually, there was a Sports Illustrated piece a few years ago where somebody who, like, knew he was Wilt Chamberlain's son came out, like, after Wilt had died and said, like, I'm certain I'm his son. And, like, there was a whole big piece on him and all this stuff. So, like, I kind of believe, like, he hooked up with a crazy amount of women because that was kind of like the NBA culture back then. It was just, like, it was the Wild West. Like, people were ODing on cocaine and people were doing drugs in the locker rooms and smoking I almost said smoking beers, smoking darts in the locker rooms at halftime and drinking beers pregame. And it, you got literally just got to do whatever you want. So Wilt has his place. Five is a crazy place to put him. I would not put him at five. Um, Bill Russell at six. Bill Russell at six. One of the best defenders of all time. Is he? I mean, he has all those rings. In an era where he had the most stacked team, arguably of like those teams had him, John Havlicek, Casey Jones, or Casey Casey, I think it was Casey Jones. Um, there were just so many people on the like they just had the most loaded teams every year in a in a in a time era where they're like was barely twenty teams or something like that. I mean. I'm not diminishing what Wilt has been able to do in his career, what Wilt was able to do in his career, but it's just like, it doesn't, there's no way, no way, I, and I said Wilt, there's no way Bill Russell's the sixth best player of all time. Larry Bird at seven. We're at number seven, and I haven't seen Shaq or Kobe yet. We're at number seven, and I haven't seen Shaq or Kobe yet. Larry Bird was that dude, though. Larry Dude was that bird. That bird? Larry Dude was that bird. Larry Dude was that bird. Larry Dude was that bird. Larry Bird was that guy. I'm a Pistons fan, so I'm well aware of the damage that uh, Larry Bird inflicted on the Pistons when he was in his prime. And he would give you a 35-point triple-double in his prime any night. Uh, his back just failed him. Down the stretch of his career, he couldn't like really get healthy. He had that game where he scored like fifty with his left hand only, or something like that. But I would honestly, I would honestly, I'd put Larry above Wilt on this list. I would put Larry above Wilt. That's like the one big change I'd make right now. I may even put Larry above Magic. Um, and I hope that's not crazy to say, but I might put Larry above Magic. Uh, here we go. We're starting to get into like the meat and potatoes of me being like irked by this. This list is icky so far besides the top three. Tim Duncan is the best power forward of all time, possibly. 
no way he's the eighth best player of all time. There is no way. I say this with all respect. He can't be the eighth best player of all time. I know he's got the he's got the rings. He was one of the best defenders of all time uh, uh, in, in terms of like low blocks, low, like paint defender type people. I cannot see an argument for Tim Duncan at eight. I don't even think I want to do this video anymore. Oh, tattoo her real quick. That, you can't even see that. And then that. Oh my god, I'm so... Um, Oscar Robertson on this list. I wish that this list had an author because I would be subtweeting them and doing a lot of online harassment towards them. Oscar Robertson. Big O. Mr. OG Triple Double. Mm. It's the ninth best player of all time. Now, there's one spot left in the top 10. There is no Shaq or Kobe on this list so far. There's no Shaq or Kobe on this list so far. Oscar Robertson is a top five point guard of all time, but maybe. Eh, maybe. Maybe. He might be, he's fringe five, fringe five, top, top five point guard of all time to me, to me. He got his only ring playing with Kareem and like, ooh, it just irks because our, I, I think the point guards are being too highly rated on this list. Like magic is not the fourth best player of all time. Magic Johnson, Irvin Magic Johnson is not the fourth best player of all time. Oscar Robertson's not the ninth best player of all time. Wilt's not the fifth best player of all time. We are 7.5% into this list, and I already have so many issues. I'm scared to scroll to 10. But, wow. I just, like, really don't have... Like, I had words for the other things. I just don't have words. It makes no sense. Oscar at 9 makes no sense. 10 is Kobe Bryant. So now, not only... Okay. I, I scrolled up to 11. I kind of cheated. Kobe and Shaq are at 10. Kobe's at 10. Shaq is at 11. Kobe Bryant is the closest thing that we have ever seen, RIP Mamba, in the NBA to Michael Jordan. He's one of the the one of the most prolific scores of the basketball of all time. He's one of the most versatile offensive players of all time. He made nine defensive first teams, was close to winning a depoy one year. I mean, career stat lines are twenty five five and five pretty much. I mean. The dude just did it all. He didn't necessarily like take the Lakers from a bad place into a better place, but he helped turn around that franchise. The Lakers have their have their times where, you know, they're good and then they fizzle out a, a tad and then they get good free agents and then they put together runs and they win championships. I mean, he won three with Shaq. He won three with Shaq. And I think that this duo, Shaq at eleven. I have big issues with them being at 10 and 11. Shaq cannot be outside your top 10 players of all time. Shaquille O'Neal. Big Diesel. shaq -dis, Superman. You know. Cannot be at 11. He's the most dominant player I've seen. And I didn't even see him like in his prime prime. I saw him like late Lakers, early Heat Shaq. And, like, still people had trouble checking him. And I just he's probably the second or third most dominant player I've ever... Probably second most dominant player I've ever seen. LeBron probably is one. Because he, he just had the ability to where he's too big. And I've seen the highlights. I've seen his, uh, 
his game. It, 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 like, at a point, he was playing with the Magic where he was willing that team to play off, like, appearances. They had, they had built a good roster around him, but, like, he was uncheckable at most points in his career until he got later down the line when he was playing for, like, the Cavs and the Suns and the Celtics and the the bad teams that he played for. But there's not an argument that you can give me other than the 100-point game for Shaquille O'Neal over Wilt Chamberlain or Shaquille... or No, for Wilt over Shaq. Or for Will over Kobe. These players produced at a somewhat similar level. I don't even want to call it similar. Will was like just a different beast. He was just like a different type of thing. Like the NBA had never seen, you know, a 7-1 center who could run like that. And who could play defense like that. Like my dad tells me this story that, you know, they called Will. Oh, he was scoring too much, but he couldn't, you know, play defense. So then he literally led the league in blocks one year. Then they said, oh, he plays too much defense. He doesn't, you know, provide enough on offense. So then he led the league in assists one year. I don't know how true that is. Um, my dad could be fibbing me. But I, I I don't see a world where, especially Oscar Robertson over both of those guys, no. I'll tell you no's. Um, Oscar Robertson, no. Tim Duncan, no. Larry Bird, possibly over them bill russell no will chamberlain no magic johnson no i would put mike lebron kareem probably then larry kobe shack tim duncan shack kobe tim duncan um, that's how I do it. I'm going to go to number 12 now. Kevin Durant. I like, I like this. I would, I would still put KD over Oscar Robertson. His, dude, his career averages are 27, 7, and 5. 4, uh, 4.2. That's crazy. I talk about this all the time. When, like, I watch the Nets play. I And I mentioned it just like the NBA had never seen anybody like Wilt. Name me a seven foot small forward who can score in every way possible, handle the ball like a guard, and play clamps defense. You literally cannot name me another player like Kevin Durant in the history of the sport. You cannot do it. And when I say score in any way, I don't mean score in any way in average 15. I mean score in every way and put up a 30 ball every night. He's led the league in scoring once, I think, one or two times. Was pff, has an MVP, Finals MVPs, Finals. He's got it all. I'd put him over Oscar. Um, yeah, I think that's the only person I'd put him over on that list. I'd put him over Oscar for sure. KD would be in my top ten, I think. Hakeem Olajuwon at thirteen. I like this because Hakeem, I feel like, is a guy that doesn't get talked about enough when it comes to the best players of all time, like him being the fourth center on this list, I think Hakeem is more skilled than Bill Russell. Call me crazy. Hakeem has the record for the most blocks in a career. I think he has some, like he averaged three blocks a year for his career. For his career, three blocks a year. One of the best scoring centers we've seen in terms of versatility. He had the craziest footwork of all time. Hakeem, I think at 13 is a good spot. Not too far outside the top 10. Dr. J at 14, I'm okay with. Dr. J at 14, I'm, at 14, I'm okay with. Dr. J was like the OG NBA superstar. Like, they had comic books after this man. They had, like cartoon series after this man like he was like a real life superhero like he was like I think the first player that like people really started like that's when the idolization of NBA players started was with Dr. J he was just so marketable such a cool guy you know Dr. J just what a nickname too top five nickname of all time Dr. J um Moses Malone at 15 I feel like he's another guy that's very slept on um, he won a couple MVPs, I think. He was a he was a rebound machine, a great low post scorer. 
at 15, I think it's fine, but I'm leaving people out. Now I remember, and now I am taking issue with this list. Wardell, Wardell, however you want to pronounce it, Stephen Curry is apparently the 16th greatest player in the history of basketball. That's just simply not true. No offense to Moses, R.I.P. Moses. No offense to Dr. J. I'm putting him over those guys. I'm putting Stephen Curry over those guys. Now, that might be some modern bias, um, but I was a Curry hater for a little bit. And I've come to realize that none of these people, maybe Dr. J with the dunking, but like not many people on this list revolutionized or changed or had an impact on basketball, the sport basketball, not from like a marketing and a and a watching and a viewership standpoint, but like a literal impact on the game of basketball. Nobody has had that on this list like Steph Curry. Um, He'd be in my top. He'd be right behind KD. Probably. I might have to bump Hakeem down a spot, even though Hakeem is great. Um, is there anybody? I mean, I think he's better. He's better than I'd have him over Oscar. I'd have him over Wilt. I'd have him over Magic. Those guys got to get bumped down a little bit. Those guys got to get bumped down a little bit. Um, let's scroll. I may just do this until 20, until I get pissed off is when I'm going to do this. Dirk at night. Uh, Dirk at 17 feels high. I'll leave it at that right now. We will address that as I see more of the list. Giannis at 18. I think is appropriate for right now. Two-time MVP. I think two-time Depoy. I could be wrong about that. I think he has two Depoys. Finals win. Finals MVP. In the closing game of that finals, he scored 50. So they're saying Giannis is the fourth best power forward of all time already. Is that four? I'm not going to, I'm not mathing. Uh, I think they're saying three because Tim, yeah, Tim, Dirk, and Giannis. Okay. Jerry West at 19 is disrespectful. Put put Jerry West in front of Dirk. Dirk has one, fi- I don't think, Jer- does Jerry have a finals ring? He's the damn logo. He's the logo. He's the logo. Five, 14 seasons, five all defensive team honors. Scoring title. Oh, he does have an NBA championship. I I would put I would put Jerry West over over Dirk and Giannis. I'd put Jerry West over Dirk and mm, I'd put Jerry West over Dirk for sure. I'd also put Jerry West over Moses Malone. That might be crazy. Um, I might even put him over Doctor J too. Elgin Baylor at 20. Now we're like kind of getting nasty. Played from 58 to 72. Had some crazy average 13 and a half rebounds a game as a small forward. <clears throat> Elgin kind of has the same thing with me that Wilt has where it's like the eras thing. Where it's like, man, what was the comp at small forward when Elgin Baylor was playing for him to be able to average 27 and 13 and a half? It had to be something crazy. It had to be some wreck comp, like some... YMCA type comp. Elton Baylor at 20 kind of feels high. Kevin Garnett at 21. So they're saying that Giannis is already a better player than Kevin Garnett. And I agree with that. I agree with that. Do I have a problem with Elgin Baylor over Kevin Garnett? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Charles Barkley at 22. Okay. Carl Malone at 23. As much as I hate Carl Malone for the person that he is and the things that he does outside of basketball, I have to put Carl Malone over Charles Barkley. Um, Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley was kind of an original player, but I mean, the round mound to rebound, great name, the mailman, terrible, terrible, Nick, uh, terrible nickname. I just don't, I mean, I think I hate Carl Malone personally. You know what? Carl Malone shouldn't be on the list. Um, John Stockton, John Stockton's an idiot. Have you guys seen like what John Stockton has been saying 
in the media lately, it's like horrendously brain dead what he's been like saying out loud. David Robinson at 25. I don't have an issue with that. John Havlicek at 26 is uh, it's concerning a tad still have not seen Allen Iverson here oh Isaiah Thomas at 27 I love I love Zeke Zeke is my guy one finals MVP, two finals uh, wins, average 19, 9, and 3.5, and, and two steals a game for his career. Those are very good averages. George Mikan, apparently NBA pioneer. Uh, uh, we're getting into some fishy territory here. Actually, not really. I think these rankings are accurate. Okay, so now we have Chris Paul on this list, and we do not have Allen Iverson yet. We do not have Allen Iverson yet. And we're almost at the 30th best player of all time. I know I'm probably forgetting somebody. Chris Paul is the most, like... He's the most, like, locker room guy in the history of basketball because he's just like every team he goes to, he makes them better. The Pelicans were horrible. He made them a playoff team and he damn near won the MVP MVP. He went to the Clippers and didn't single handedly, but like was probably the main reason they were as good as they were when he was there. He goes to the Rockets. They go from a team that was struggling with playoff success to a team that made it to two straight uh, Western conference finals. Then he goes to OKC and takes one of the least talented rosters in the NBA and makes them a playoff team and was in the MVP race that year and then has been in MVP conversations for the last two years for taking a Suns team that was terrible, although Book was on the up and up, I'll say that. Book was on the up and up and they were starting to build something good and then they got Chris Paul and that seemed like the missing piece. And he's... Up there, in terms of greatest point guards. I don't know where I'd put him. Three or four, probably. And now, what we have Dwayne Wade at 30, and there is no Allen Iverson. Um, No offense to Isaiah Thomas. I'm taking Chris Paul over Isaiah Thomas. Maybe, maybe. I'm definitely taking Chris Paul over John Havlicek and over John Stockton. They kind of, him and John Stockton kind of have, kind of have the same mystique about them, though. People seem like might say it's like empty stats for both of those guys, but like they made they've made deep runs. I also hate John Stockton personally. Dwayne Wade at thirty. I love D Wade. I love Flash. You know Wade County. Jumping on the scores table, doing all that stuff. Those Heat teams were so fun for me to watch. Um, his his last year in Miami was electric. I don't know. Besides Michael Jordan, there may not be a player in NBA history who has had such a profound impact on the place that they spent the most of their time. Like, Jordan had a crazy impact in the city of Chicago. And Dwayne Wade had that type of effect in Miami. I mean, they called it Wade County. Um, playing with LeBron, he got those two rings. You know, he was a menace in the early part of his career. Uh, won a finals MVP. I mean, he was just he was just nasty like that. AI at 31 is terribly low. AI at 31 is terribly low. Piston legend, Al Iverson. You guys remember that? When he played on the Grizzlies and the Pistons. Um, wow. Allen Iverson, I'm sorry, is a better basketball player. And that's why I'm ranking this list. 
I'm taking accolades into account, but I'm also taking bas can you play basketball. AI is better than Dwayne Wade. AI is better than Chris Paul. AI is better than George Mikan. AI is better than Isaiah Thomas. Better than John Havlicek. Better than David Robinson. Better than John Stockton. Better than Carl Malone. Better than KG. Better than Elgin Baylor. The fact that Allen Iverson, I, I'm like, I'm like very containing my anger right now, and I'm sorry I'm looking over here, but I'm like scrolling through the list. Allen Iverson is better than all those people, and I don't think it's close. Allen Iverson also was one of those guys who had a crazy cultural impact on the game of basketball. Like, people started wearing their hair in braids, started wearing armbands, started getting a lot of tattoos. Like, he was really the first player I remember seeing, besides Shaq. He was really, like, the first player. Him and Shaq were the first people I saw, and I was like, damn, those guys got, like, tattoos? Oh, that's cool, okay. Had his mom braiding his hair during a game. I can't remember if that was an all-star game or if it was a real game. Um, but the man was a menace. Averaged 26 and 6, 2.2 steals and 3 and 3.7 rebounds. I mean, the fact that he was like a 6-foot, six 6-1 six guard doing the things that he was doing in an era where the NBA was inherently bigger, where it was like, you know, six gar- uh six guards, shooting guards had to be like the point guard was a smaller position, but like when the wings and centers were so, 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 so big, the fact that he was able to get his shot off one of the best ball handlers of all time. I mean, 31 is criminally low for Allen Iverson. That's one of my bigger issues with this list. Scotty at 32. Best Robin in the history of the NBA. I've got to see who's below him before I start complaining about where he possibly is. Kawhi Leonard. Now, this is a good argument. Now, this is a good argument. This is a good argument. Who's who's better? I have no problem with this ranking. I think I have to see more of who's below them. Bob Cousy, nothing to really say about that. Bob Pettit, nothing to really say about that. Dominique, I'd put him above... Kuzi, possibly. I may bump Pettit up above Kuzi. Steve Nash at 37. Steve Nash at 37. Can't be true, right? I mean, we all know that he robbed those MVPs, right? Those MVPs, he did not deserve them. Rick Barry at 38. Mm. Kevin McHill at 39, I feel like is kind of disrespectful. I'd put him over Rick Barry. I'd put him over Steve Nat. Mm, no, I can't do that. I'd put him over Rick Barry. I'd. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Patrick Ewing at forty. Walt Frazier at forty-one. Gary Payton at forty-two seems kind of high, and it uh, and it is high. So Gary Payton's like the last guard in NBA history to win a Defensive Player of the Year, but having him above Jason Kidd makes no sense. Jason Kidd is like one of the best point guards of all time. He's up there. He was like a good, a great shooter from beyond the arc. He was one of the best passers. I know he only averaged 12 points a game, but what he brought in terms of being a big guard that was able to switch on multiple defenders, like he just he elevated. He was another guy who elevated his teams. Like he was another guy who just went somewhere, made them good. He's just like kind of a lesser offensive threat Chris Paul if that makes sense Bill Walton at 44 I don't know I felt like his career was like really short but he played from 74 to 87 and I know a lot of those times he was like backups doing that stuff I mean he won an MVP and he won a finals 44 Mm. Bob McAdoo Bob McAdoo it's arguable between those two arguable um, Jerry Lucas, don't really have much to say about Jerry Lucas. Ray Allen at 47 kind of seems high, and it is high. James Harden's a better player than Ray Allen. Okay, so James Harden's number 50 on this list. We'll just jump to this. James Harden's number 50 on this list. I'm going to go through, and I'm going to tell you who I think James Harden's better than. Nate Thurman. Wes Unseld. Ray Allen. 
Jerry Lucas, Bill Walton, Gary Payton, Walt Frazier, Steve Nash, and Bob Cousy. Now, that was most of the players that I had just talked about. I think James Harden's better than, and he is. Like, people do, like, people are in love with the idea of the past. When the present is right in front of them, showing them that the what they're witnessing now is better than anything that they have witnessed in the past. Like, I'm not talking about, like, years previous i'm talking like decades previous like and i know that those people like the people who made the 50 list had to make the 50 list but there's no way that james harden who has won an mvp should have had two mvps is one of the best scorers and playmakers and offensive players the league has ever seen there's no way he's the 50th best player in the history of the nba he's simply not richie miller at 51 i feel like is appropriate he just never got over that hump. And there are a couple guys on this list who never got over that hump. Uh, Reggie was a cult legend, though. George Gervin, the Iceman. One of my favorite players in the history of the sport. The Iceman's crazy. Crazy good nickname, too. Um, average 26 and 4 and a half for a career. I would put him, I'd put him above Reggie. I would put him above Nate Thurman. I'd put him above Wes Unseld. I'd put him above Ray Allen. I'd put him above Jerry Lucas. I'd put him above Bob McAdoo. I'd put him above Bill Walton. Um, yeah. Put him above Gary Payton. Put him above Walt Frazier. I'd put him above Patrick Ewing, and I'm not lying. Iceman was crazy. Iceman, like, invented the finger roll. I don't know if he invented it, but he definitely popularized it. Clyde Drexler at 53 is disrespectful too. I'd probably put him over all the people I said I would put George Gervin over besides Patrick Ewing. Pistol Pete, Pete Maravich, gone too soon. Didn't play long enough in the NBA. Like, only played 10 years. But like, you know, he had to quit when he had to quit. Guys weren't making any money back then either. I wish Pistol Pete would have played longer. Not going to lie. 24, 4, and 5 for a career, is crazy good. Like, that's literally a bucket a night off of Kobe's averages. Pete deserves to be higher. You know what? I'm putting Pete... Pete's above Clyde. Sorry. Pete's above Clyde. And I know I'm not looking at the camera right now, which kind of sucks, but I'm scrolling through the list. Pete's above Clyde. Pete's above Nate Thurman. Pete's above Wes Unseld. He's above... Yeah. Ray Allen? No. No. He's above Jerry Lucas, McAdoo, Walton, Peyton, Kidd, Frazier, Ewing, Barry, Nash, Dominique, Pettit, and Cousy. And I, for, I, I said I was going to like look back at the list and see who else, like, I, I'd have to see who's after Scotty Pippen before. I, like, get mad about who, like, he got ranked after. And I don't necessarily know if I have any issues with guys lower. Because he was, like, he was the best Robin of all time. He was, like, a huge reason. Like, a 6'8 forward who could handle the ball. Who was the team's best passer. The team's best defender. One of the team's best rebounders. One of the team's better inside scorers. Like, on a team that won six championships, on a franchise that won six championships, like, I, you can't discount that. He was a good basketball player. James, Earl Monroe at 55, James Worthy at 56, Willis Reed at 57, Elvin Hayes at 58, Nate Archibald at 59, Sam Jones, oh, that's the guy that played with uh, Bill Russell, Sam Jones, not Casey Jones. Dave Cowens. Hmm. Paul Pierce at 62, so many Celtics on this list, and most of them played with Bill Russell. <laughs> um, that's what I'll say. Uh, Paul Pierce at 62, I'm taking him over Cowens, I'm taking him over uh, Sam Jones, sorry, Tiny Nate Archibald, Archibald. 
Uh, played for the Kansas City Kings, you know, which Casey had a basketball team. That's where I'm from. Um, I'd take him over Nate Archibald. Maybe not over Elvin Hayes. I'm taking him over Willis Reed. I don't know if I can take him over James Worthy. James Worthy is, like, one of the more slept-on buckets in NBA history. Like, he was really that dude, and people don't talk about that enough. Uh, Robert Parrish, another Celtic, at 63. I think he has, like, the record for, like, the most games played in. He played from 76 to 97. Jeez. Um, that's fine. Hal Greer, fine. Lenny Wilkins, fine. Paul Arizon. Arizon? I don't know. They just needed a reason to put him on the list. <laughs> um, Dennis Rodman. Gotta be higher on this list. I'm sorry. Pistons bias or not. I'm taking him over Paul. I'm taking him over Lenny Wilkins. Is that it? Well, yeah, Lenny Wilkins. Taking him over Hal Greer. Maybe not over Parrish. Probably not over Pierce. Taking him over Cowens. Taking him over Jones. Archibald. Probably over Elvin Hayes. Probably over Willis Reed. Uh, probably over Earl Monroe. Like, there's not many better defenders in the history of the NBA than Dennis Rodman. And he played in an era where they asked him to guard guards. They asked him to go like when he was on the Pistons, he was literally guarding Mike. Like he would pick up Mike at the perimeter. Like he is a super glue man that every team needs one of those guys to win a championship. And he provided so much, so much to the Pistons teams and to the Bulls teams that he was on. Russell, Russell Westbrook at 68. I'm sorry. I'm taking him over Paul, Arizon, Arizon. Taking him over Lenny Wilkins. Taking him over Hal Greer. Taking him over all... If your picture's in black and white on this list, I'm taking Russell Westbrook over you. Truly one of the better point guard. And I know that recency bias is like coming into play right now and people are like, Russell Westbrook's trash. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember how good this man was? The second best player on the team that he won MVP that year was Steven Adams. He had to rely on Deion Waiters to help produce scoring for that team. And I know he played, he went to a finals when he was 20, some, like 24. That entire Thunder Corps was like 25 or younger when they went to that finals against the Heat. Like what could have been? Career averages of 23, 8.5, and, and 7.5. And Mr. Triple Double. Most triple doubles in a career in NBA history, I believe. Most triple doubles in a season for sure. Like, let's not... He's not playing good for the Lakers right now, and that's understandable. He's not playing well. The man is a top 50 player of all time in NBA history. Or maybe. I don't know. Carmelo at 69? Higher. I'm taking him over all the black and white pictures. Dolph Shays? I'm going to get on my J.J. Redick right now. Dolph Shea shot like 38% from the field for a career. He shouldn't be on this list, but he had to be because he was on the first list. Anthony Davis also shouldn't be. Mm, should be on the list. Billy Cunningham. Hell if I know who that is. Dave DeBusher. Dave Bing. And Dame. Dame at 75. Yeah. Dame should not have been omitted from this list. And here's the thing. This is what I don't like. <laughs> what I don't like is holding on to the past, right? What I don't like is holding on to the past. Where, I'm setting this down. Where we really like take a look at things and we're like, man, like there's no way we can say that that guy was better. Like there's no way. With what we see now, there's no way we can say that guy is better. So, there should have been omissions from the top 75 list. Like, the people... Like, Paul Arizon, like, Dolph Shays, like... That just tells you that, the that like, those people being on the list... Is terrible. It's terrible. There's no reason that those people should be on the list now... Of the best NBA players ever. When there are so many better players. Also. Dame. I love Dame. Dame 
to me, is one of my top five favorite players to watch in the history of basketball, right? I love Dame. Bubble Dame was on some stuff that, like, they should have tested him not for COVID. They should have tested him for being so much better than everybody else. Sir, have you taken the... Dame, 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 come here. We're going to have to test you for the being better than everybody thing. Yeah, you're going to have to take a being better being better than everybody test. We're going to need you to spit in this cup. That was Bubble Dame. Dame Lillard makes this list over Dwight Howard. How? Over Dwight Howard. How? As the NBA was transitioning from a big man's league in the 80s and 90s into a guard league in the and wing league in the 2000s and 2010s Dwight Howard was doing the damn thing nightly in his prime he was built like an upside down Dorito chip and I'm gonna tell you right now there's no way y'all eat Doritos wide to skinny you know what I'm saying you don't eat it from like the base that's flat to the point you do point first so if that's the front Dwight Howard was literally built like an upside down triangle you know, his shoulders went on for days. It was, you know. And he was like Shaq in a lot of ways. Except he was a better defender. The man won three defensive player of the years. Okay? How was a guy like that left off this list but Dolph Shays who shot 38% from the field? Also, if you didn't, if you played before the three-point line, I don't, like... Unless you're like great, unless you were like great, like great, like not a lot of these people are great that played before the three point line. But like if you played before the three point line, like Jerry West scoring 27 a game before the three point line is nuts. But like Dolph Shays scoring whatever he scored, like 16 a game on 38% shooting before the three-point line is terrible. Kick him off the list. Same with Paul Azarin. Same with Dave Cowens. I'm looking at Billy Cunningham right now. He actually put up some solid stats, but played before the three-point line. Played two years with the three-point line. One year. Didn't it come out in 75? Three-point line? Um, Didn't they drop? Hey, you heard that new... Uh, they, dr they just dropped the three-point line. Um... But, like, Dwight Howard should be on the list. And I know this is a conversation that we've been having, but, like, if Dwight was, like, he should be on this list. Um, I have rambled. I have rambled. And I do not know now what to talk about. Um, main things that bugged me on this list, Magic at four, Oscar at nine, Shaq and Kobe at 10 and 11 is crazy. Will at 5. I mean, there was just so much on this list that just Steph Curry at 16, Dirk at 17. Like, come on people. Steph Curry's got to be higher and we need to realize that. And I said it in the last time I did this video. I did a video like this. Stop lying. We need to stop lying to ourselves. Um Yeah, that's it for me. Probably a late video. The Dwight conversation is definitely a late conversation to be having. Um, yeah, there is no author uh, to this article. This article was published on February 21st, 2022. And here's my thing also. ESPN makes the worst lists of all time. The worst lists of all time. Also, no way Tim Duncan's the eighth best player in the history of the basketball. The, of the basketball. The, the shooty hoopy thingy. Round. Round ball. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's just so many people who don't deserve to be on that list, and there's so many people who deserve to be higher. James Harden at 50 is another one that just popped in my mind, criminally underrated. So is Jason Kidd, criminally underrated. Um, I may be looking at this with a modern lens, but I don't care. This is the best era of basketball. The era of basketball since I've been alive is the best, like, my 23 years of living is the best basketball that this world has ever seen. Nothing before that beats what we're see what we've seen for the last 23 years and i haven't seen all of it but i've seen enough of it to know some of those people don't belong on that list paul azarin dolph shays this is longer 
and I know because I probably I like rambled way too long about a lot of people. Um, this was fun. May do something like this when the NFL 100 comes out. I'm begging for that to come out because I hate it every year because it's so dumb and it just like makes a lot of sense because it's a player voted league and a lot of the stuff is like really odd. Like a lot of the rankings are really weird. It's like mm, really that guy over that guy. Um, and it makes a lot of sense when CBA, uh, things come around and the players can't agree on anything because some of them have takes where Drew Brees is the second best player in the NFL or ranked above Patrick Mahomes some years. Uh, so yeah, um, don't know what the next style of video is going to be. I kind of just do these whenever I want to about whatever I want to, uh, next one might be NFL related. Next one might be NBA related. Next one might be March madness related. It is March dirty soda in the styrofoam. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Like sc subscribe, subscribe, like subscribe, comment, uh, follow me on Twitter at IMTJS underscore. Bye.